Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at Axe, one of the highest winner heroes in all of Dota right now. I'm not kidding, on Dota buff he's top 5, really really impressive, and this hero has received a couple of substantial buffs as of late, which have really catapulted this hero become a very top meta pick. On top of that, I actually think offlane heroes that have the option to kill engines are very very powerful in the current state of Dota with how the map is laid out. They have two camps of ancients. Right, so we're gonna be getting into Axe. Also, this team Heroic has been really impressive this tournament. They just took down Team Spirit 2-0. So obviously a very, very competent team. We're gonna learn a lot about Axe, a lot about Dota, and talk about the meta as a whole. So let's get into it. All right, and before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day, I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. Axe is a hero, there's a couple things to do. In the laning stage, I agree with this build. One of the downsides of Axe is his base damage. He has very good base movement speed and decent base armor, but his base damage is bad. So buying quelling and damage components for Bracer is very important so you don't miss CS. From there at level one, you're always gonna skill your W and you're gonna to try to cast it on the enemy support. The reason why is Battle Hunger does damage for 12 seconds, so it's a 120 damage nuke that slows if they're facing away from you, and it does extra damage based on your armor. So actually, it's gonna do 14 damage per second because he has four armor, and you can increase the damage of Battle Hunger by increasing your armor by, well, even buying armor items like Ring of Protection, which I don't recommend in most lanes, but it is an option. So yeah, you're gonna wanna cast your W on the support because the support can't get rid of it. You can get rid of Battle Hunger, by getting a deny or a last hit. And supports will rarely get either unless they're sitting in the creep wave and they're playing Treant or like Shadow Shaman, in which case you should hesitate to battle hunger them. Now from there, in this game in particular, he has really bad matchups. Axe is very much bad against Batrider, can't really get on top of him and he can flame break you away. And you're also terrible against Morphling. It's very hard to keep battle hunger on Morphling. You can't really counter helix him and trying to catch him off guard with a call is not practical at a high level. So yeah, th this lane is not good. So the key thing that he has to do in this lane is really just buy a lot of regen, play defensive, and wait for the level three timing of Grimstroke. And they actually do end up getting first blood in this lane. It's nothing crazy. He doesn't do anything special. He actually gets gone on. It's an overextension from the side of Talon, and they actually end up getting the kill on the Batrider. So really, really well done. <laughs> he definitely did not need to chase that far. He almost killed himself. <laughs> But it was a good first blood nonetheless, and this was all a snowball effect of constant battle hungers on the Batrider. So the remainder of the lane is super, super crucial, and I can't stress this enough. What he does is he stops interacting with the Morphling, and Axe is one of my favorite pub heroes for the average player right now because of this option. Is the lane bad? Just stop playing the lane. Now, lane creeps will always give you the most XP in Dota, and you should always prioritize lane creeps if you have the option. But if you don't have the option, Axe and Darkseer, in my opinion, are the two best heroes in the game, or two of the best meta heroes in the game, that can just start hitting neutrals. He ends up also rotating over and finding a kill onto the Batrider hero, which is really nice, just extremely good awareness, gets himself to level 5, and then heads back over to this camp. If you're going to do this, you do want a Ring of Health, and you do want a neutral item that gives regen. Divide Llama ends up going the full greed build, and I think this is something that he tends to prefer doing, like as a player, he likes hitting the hard timings. So he's gonna go no phase boots, straight into blade mail, really trying to prioritize that blink blade mail timing that we'll see typically around minute 11 to 13, depending on how good your game is. And so with the help of the safety bubble, he's able to farm up a large camp stack right here. And then after that, he makes the incredibly good play, just wait for it. Gonna farm up this stack, almost complete his blade mail. And here's the best part, die to the neutral camp. But at least it's a full HP refresh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, if he sells his branches, he's got a nine minute play mail, which is not bad. However, he's going to look pretty poor. Obviously, once again, this matchup is not good, but his Grimstroke is huge because he really helped the Grimstroke have a good game. So from there, this hero really wants to play around stacks and stacks. I mean, they're just key. They're really, really key for Axe as a hero. They super enable this hero to have a comeback game because Ancients in particular give basically the most XP in Dota. The only other thing that is comparable to the amount of XP in the early game is solo kills. And I mean like hard one-on-one -on -one solo kills. If you solo kill someone, you will get 
just as much XP as like an ancient camp or an ancient, especially if it's an ancient stack. And so we'll see right here, he's going to go for another set of stacks. And this is what catapults his game to some extreme level. Now, if you're going to take ancient stacks by a salve, um, I think he doesn't here and it ends up costing him a huge portion of his HP pool. So getting into the mid game, guys, it's very simple what you want to do. Until you have blink dagger, don't make plays. Don't TP unless the enemy team is doing something like really insane and you can get three dunks. Just don't TP. Play for your XP, play for your levels, and play for the Blade Mal Blink timing. We're going to see that obviously come into play here. And you can go Vanguard. If you want to go like Giga Farming, you can go Vanguard. And I like Vanguard on Axe because you can disassemble it later on using the Vitality Booster for Bloodstone or Octarine Core, right? Both of which are very, very powerful and the late game scaling items of Axe. So yeah, when you're farming in the mid game, there's two things you want to keep in mind, guys. Number one, if the lane is easy, you should be dragging the waves from here to this camp, here to this camp and here to this camp if the lane is hard which it is this game it's very simple you farm this camp maybe the ancients if you have vanguard if you don't go vanguard you prioritize the large camp this large camp if left alone and then the creep wave when it's pushed into you let them push the wave into you don't contest them right the only reason he's stepping up for this wave is because he thinks that they are not here right he sees the play bottom he knows that they're not here after that, you can take the Ancient Stack. All you have to do is call it, right? You get the bonus armor, and you can actually wipe out an Ancient Stack even with no Vanguard. It does cost you the majority of your health, which is why I recommend having a Salve in case the fight breaks out, right? He doesn't ship a Salve. He's just going to rely completely on regen, which you can do, but it's risky. If a fight breaks out, which in pubs, fights are constantly breaking out, you might not be able to fight. Oh, the gyro, <laughs> the shovel gyro gives him salves. So there you go. I guess that's a solution. If you have a very nice support player, you can get gifted a salve, uh, which sure, fine. That is that is the solution. And then boom, you've got a 13 minute blink blade mail. And this is a hard game. It seems like he's pretty far, right? Because he has a ton of CS. But in these pro games, sometimes everyone has a ton of CS. And so he's technically not very far, but with a horrible lane, right? A one in three kill score. Things have not gone his way. Uh, he still has a 14 minute blink blade mail. There's basically no excuse to be poor on axe. And boom, a blade mail call onto the Wind Ranger. Very nice kill. Super important for the game. And look, he's level 11 and three fourths. Sure, his net worth is here. But this is why Ancients are broken. The Wind Ranger, with the same net worth, is two levels behind him. Two levels. Two for almost three. By the time she respawns, it will be three. And this is Axe in a nutshell. You could have the trash's game and you will be decently farmed with extremely high levels and be able to have impact. And that's a good sign for a pub hero where you have a lot of resilience. Bad game, farm backwards. Good game, farm forwards, apply pressure. Now, in terms of skill build and general gameplay, there's a couple things that he does. So first things first, he skips his 10 talent, which actually, now that I'm looking at it, I really don't think you should do this. I think both of the 10 talents are actually extremely good. For a while now, I've been really pushing how good I think the four second calling blade speed bonus duration is. If you don't know what this is, if you get a kill with Axe, everyone around you in a 900 radius for six seconds gets 20 armor at level six. So at level 12, 25 armor, bonus 25% movement speed, right? This is insane. You go really fast and have obscene armor, 25 armor. And so if you take this 10 talent, it lasts for 10 seconds. On supports, that's gonna make them very hard to kill for backline physical damage dealers like Ricky and Slark. And so it's really powerful to get these dunk kills, super powerful. However, this other 10 talent is also nasty. 12% movement speed per active battle hunger. I didn't really fully read into this talent because of how good the other 10 talent was, but basically anytime you battle hunger someone, even if they're facing you and they're not getting slowed, you still get 12% movement speed for every battle hunger you cast, and that gets down to a five second cooldown. So I don't know guys, both talents are really OP. 12% movement speed is honestly insane, but I love how he plays this team fight, calls up the, the pango, they find that kill. But 12% movement speed is insane, like straight up insane. And actually in this team fight here, we're gonna see another beautiful team fight from Divai. Uh, and he does skill up the 10 talent, right? So he skills it kind of at a weird place. I will admit this whole scaling is a little bizarre because the value point of battle hunger, I mean, getting it down to five seconds is really good. The cooldown, right? It goes from 10 to five, from three to four. So then taking the 10 talent now is honestly bizarre. I personally recommend taking the 10 talent immediately. I think either one is worth it at 10. They're both really, really strong. 
Team fight here, he does get canceled by a Firefly, but a very simple walk in uh, blade mail call takes out the Wind Ranger. So Devise gameplay honestly is really impressive to me because he's really willing to play Axe as this like scaling beast. You'll see in terms of his item builds, he went bots after the blade mail blink and then BKB. BKB is obviously just BKB, but the boss, the reason why you buy it is number one, when you initiate with Axe, it's sometimes hard to get out. So taking the left talent, the active movement speed per battle hunger, and then having bots, as well as another neutral item that gives movement speed, allows you to call and then also get out, even before BKB. On top of that, Axe is one of the best farming heroes in Dota. It requires no mana and no HP to farm, right? At this point in the game, you can out heal the camps easily. And so you can just flash farm, even as the initiator, right? We'll see that here. His team was actually playing top, sieged the top tower, and he's just farming it up. He's clearing waves. He's acting as the map control hero. And so it's pretty cool that Axe has the option to do this. Now, one of the problems with Axe is in order to clear waves, you have to sit in the wave for a long time. Uh, even though it's only three to four seconds, if you call it, it's still a long time compared to heroes like Darkseer or Mars, who can kill the wave either without showing or in one go. So you want to farm a lot of neutrals if you're going to go this build. But look, his CS is incredible. Top three on CS on Axe is really, really great. And this is mostly comes down to the bots purchase. It allows you to stay out on the map. And while his team controls the map, he's actually just farming it up. He's basically playing as the scaling hero. Now, next up, let's talk about Axe. An item I think is a little bit questionable. It does two things, well, three things. It causes you to apply battle hunger to whoever you call. It reduces the cooldown of call and anyone you call gets seven armor reduction and you get that seven armor. So if you hit a three man call, you get 21 armor. Or if you just battle hunger people, you don't even have to call them. You can just battle hunger them and they get armor reduced. So yeah, against a hero like Batrider with eight armor, clicking battle hunger on this guy and reducing his armor by seven is very, very impactful. So I can see the line with the ax. It just makes the call an eight second cooldown. Um, and on top of that, it just makes your battle hunger really obnoxious, especially for supports or even something like Wind Ranger who might not have the best armor, right? If she didn't have Defiant Shell, her armor would be 14, 15. No, it'd be 18. I'm capping to you guys. I'm, I'm straight up lying to you guys. Doesn't matter. You get the point. It's it's a lot. And so I get the line. However, I do think something like Bloodstone, which makes you more survivable all around and makes your call a larger AoE, is kind of better. I, I'm a fan of the Bloodstone, right? There's a lot of people doing both. However, if there's a very good case for armor reduction, the Ags is nice. On top of that, Remember guys, your W does damage based on your armor. So if you dunk someone and you have this Ags giving you extra armor, your battle hunger will just deal like obscene damage. You can get up to 100 damage per second on battle hunger for 12 seconds. That is a 1200 damage nuke. And that is a real possibility with these items and a dunk. Very, very real. And then at level 25, you get two times battle hunger armor multiplier. So you double that. I mean, you can get to crazy numbers. And it's also why I think this Black King bar, if you want to go full greed, can be a Kaya Sanj because you're going to amp that number even further, right? And it's definitely reasonable to just rely on HP to get out on this hero, right? A Kaya Sanj, status resist, HP pool. Well, it is an option. On top of that, if you buy Kaya Sanj, it has a lot of synergy with Bloodstone. Obviously, then you don't have Ags, but it has synergy with the Bloodstone because it amps Spell Eye Steel. And you'll see the Ags is actually, I mean, it's cool. My only real gripe with Ags is it makes the, the cooldown of Blink and Call not even close together. Usually with Axe, you're calling and then you're kiting. You're calling and then you're kiting. If you're this far ahead, you can just call and run forward, which is nice, especially with the low cooldown of your Ags. But in the average game, like... There's just no synergy between the blink cooldown and the call cooldown if you go Axe, which is why it's kind of weird. But look at his armor here, 38, right? So this battle hunger is dealing effectively, right? Because if he has 50 armor, it's dealing 75 damage per second, right? I obviously can be dispelled, but it's insane. Calls up the guy again, gets the dunk and look at his armor, look at his armor. And he didn't even take the bonus armor per calling blade stack, which I kind of agree. I think calling blade damage is just the bonus armor per calling stack. If you're going crazy and you have a billion dunks is definitely the better talent. But if the game is more standard, calling blade damage is just is just more reliable. Yeah, just time and time again, these battle hungers. I mean, he has 90 armor when he's affected by a dunk. Obviously, when that ends, he'll drop back to, down to a much more reasonable 42, which is still kind of crazy. <laughs> 
42 armor is, uh, for a strength hero, is definitely something else. And he has Rattle Cage. I, this item is so broken on Axe. It's, like, unbelievable. 12 armor. And then if you take 180 damage from any source, you fire two projectiles in a 600 radius that deal 125 damage and slow. Right? I, I, obviously, you're going to take a lot of damage as an axe, and you could force them to hit you. So this Rattle Cage item, not only does the armor synergize with Battle Hunger even further, but it just makes sense with Call, uh, and on any frontliner for that matter. This Rattle Cage item reads as completely broken. Because apparently it has no cooldown on the damage, and it doesn't seem to when, when you play it. So I feel like Rattle Cage is just a broken item. Yeah, we'll see in the Steam Fight here. Uh, you, you always want to call the heroes that have glass cannon builds. That's always the priority. Or someone who's in the front line and can be bursted by your team. But good call into the Wind Ranger. I mean, look at this. Boom. 1500 damage. She's obviously going to be KB out of panic. Uh, and he runs out of mana here, which has been unfortunate. But usually, I mean, you, he could have so much impact here. Easy call onto the tiny and just finish off the tiny. Battle hunger onto Morphling, reducing his armor and giving him more armor. Battle hunger onto the Bat Rider, dropping him to just, you know, one armor or whatever. Oh, and there's an AC too. Someone has an AC. Probably the Life Stealer. Yeah, so the Life Stealer has an AC. So this Bat Rider will easily go into the negatives on a on a call or on a battle hunger. Finally, we're gonna see one of the final fights. Yeah, so. In this team fight here, you're going to see the Spell Life Steal come into play. So with, when you get Bloodstone, uh, Spell Life Steal is obviously good on Axe, especially when the Battle Hungers start to get effective, which is kind of why I can sort of see the angle for the Axe, right? Uh, just putting out more Battle Hungers, because when you call people, you apply it, right? But you can sort of get the Battle Hunger value or the Spell Life Steal value from Battle Hunger without Axe. Once again, I, I like Octarine. Like, personally, the scaling on this hero, to me, can often be Octarine and then a Refresher over BKB. Like, you can just full greed, no BKB, just literally full greed. And if it's really fun, like, skipping BKB on this Axe hero is really fun. You can hit some crazy timings. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, look at this. I mean, it's just obscenely tanky. Apply some Battle Hungers, just 50 armor. This Wind Ranger is tickling him. The Pango is tickling him. Just absolutely no damage. Gets Solar Crested too, which obviously helped keep him up there. Uh, but yeah, this this hero is is really crazy on its timing. All right, this is pretty lame, but he took Call AoE. I really wish he took the Battle Hunger Armor Multiplier. It's like such a fun talent. It It's so noticeable how much damage you deal with the Battle Hunger Multiplier. But whatever. Call AoE, all reliable. With Bloodstone, your call is like this massive radius. It is absolutely huge. I mean, look at this. Right, it is a massive, massive rate. It's very easy to hit multi-man calls. And call is a three second disable. It's one of the longest in the game, right? It's very, very impressive. And look at that. Easy call on a two. So much damage. Lincoln's blocks the dunk. Unlucky. But alright, that's gonna be all. He queued up a Kaya Sanj next. I think there's a lot of angles. Octarine is good. Kaya Sanj is good. Eternal Shroud is good. Any of these items are good. But alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.